Hello everyone, let me introduce myself. I am Facundo Carvalho and today I will explain you when we have to apply concurrency in our programs and when we just a simple sequential program, it's, it's enough. Okay, so first we have here a, di a diagram where I try to show you some examples of programs that need resources and well, here we show how to get those resources in a sequential way and how to get these resources with concurrency. Okay, first of all, we have here a main program, in this case in Golang, but could be in any programming language, but here is on Golang. So first of all, we have a program without go routines. Well, this program needs two resources, the resource A and the resource B. For this program, well, first we'll call to this API, for example, and we will wait for this resource. And then when the program gets that resource, well, we'll start another API call to get the other resource. Imagine that the resource A, for example, is the price of Bitcoin on some particular exchange, for example, the Binance exchange, and the resource B is the price of Bitcoin, but in other exchange like KuCoin. And well, the, this program wants to compare each price and determine which price is cheaper, in what exchange I can buy Bitcoin cheaper. So that is the main thing of this program. So here, this program will request to the API of Binance the price of Bitcoin and will be waiting for the response of the Binance API. Once the program gets the price of Bitcoin, start to execute another API call to the KuCoin API. So this program make another request to that particular API of KuCoin and then the program will be waiting again for the price of Bitcoin on KuCoin. Once we get the two prices, well, the program can compare it each other and determine which price is cheaper. So in which exchange we can buy Bitcoin, for example. But we can do it with GoRoutines applying concurrency. And that will be saving us a lot of time, a lot of dead time. Because when we are requesting data to some API call, we have to wait some time. It's just milliseconds, but it's time. It's time that we can save applying concurrency. So in this case, for example, we if we apply concurrency in this particular case, we have a main program that will be forked into so process in, in two go routines. The go routine number one will be focus on get the price of Bitcoin on the Binance exchange. And the go routine number two will be focus on get the price of Bitcoin on the KuCoin exchange. And then when these two go routines get the prices, well, we'll return to the main go routine, to the main program, and then the program will can compare the prices and determine which exchange is better to buy Bitcoin. But with this schema, we are saving a lot of time, a lot of dead time in each request. We can see this better here in this other diagram. Here we have the timeline of this program without concurrency, without go routines, where we have our main go routine and then we will make a request to the Binance API and we will wait for the price of Bitcoin. So this time we get the price of Bitcoin on the Binance exchange. Once we get that, well, we can start to getting the price of the Bitcoin in the other exchange, in this case, KuCoin. And well, we have some time to make the request, another time to wait for that particular price. And well, when we have the two prices, the main go routine will do something. For example, compare these two prices and determine which exchange is better, is cheaper. And here we have the timeline of this program, but using concurrency, applying go routines to this program. So we have the main program, the main go routine here executing, and then we fork this program in two go routines. One go routine focus on get the price of, on Binance and the other focus on get the price on KuCoin. So the first go routine executes and make a request to the Binance API. And this go routine gets blocked because they this go routine needs the price of the Bitcoin 
in the Binance exchange to continue executing the go routine. But this go routine don't have it. So the operating system knows that this go routine have to be blocked because it can continue executing. So block this go routine. In this case, in this particular moment, another go routine or another sub process or another process that the operating system have and has all the resources to execute. For example, the go routine number two. So the, the operating system put the go routine number two to execute. And the go routine number two, well, do some stuff and then make a request to the KuCoin API to get the price of Bitcoin. And in this case, in this particular moment, the go routine number two, it's blocked too. Because this go routine needs the price of Bitcoin on KuCoin to continue executing. So the operating system knows that this go routine cannot continue executing. So we'll block this go routine until it gets that particular resource. So the operating system quicked this go routine and will try to put another process to execute that have all the things that the, this process needs to execute. For example, in this particular moment, when the go routine number two is making the request to the API of KuCoin, maybe the API of Binance already returned the price of Bitcoin to us. So when this go routine number two is blocked, the go routine number one has all the things, all the resources that this go routine needs to continue executing. So when this go routine gets blocked, the go routine number one came back to execute and will finish the, the go routine because they this go routine already have the price and finish. Meanwhile, the go routine number one is ending. The API of KuCoin maybe already returned us the price of the Bitcoin in this particular exchange. So when this go routine ends, the go routine number one, number two already has all the resources that they need to execute again. So the operating system will put again this go routine to execute because this go routine have all the things that they need to execute because this go routine have already the price of Bitcoin on the KuCoin exchange. So here the go routine number two will end and then the main go routine will execute again with the price of Bitcoin in these two different exchange. And we, if we see this timeline, we are saving a lot of time, a lot of dead time in each request because every time that a go, a go routine is blocked, is executed another go routine. So each time that you have to need different resources from different API with some wait times in the middle, of this request, you always will have to apply concurrency because we'll save you those dead times in each request. And for the other hand, if you have a program that needs a resource, but this resource, it's very important because with this resource, you will get another resources. And again, well, here, maybe you don't have to apply concurrency because you will need first a resource and then with this resource, you can be able to get another resources. So imagine this situation where you apply concurrency in this case. Um, for example, you need the resource A and the resource B, but to get the resource B, you first need the resource A. So you apply concurrency and well, this go routine will execute. We'll try to get the resource A. Here, the go routine will be blocked. So we have to wait for this API call and this resource B, this go routine, sorry, will try to execute, but it will be blocked again because the, this go routine needs the resource A to make this API call. So it's better to use sequential programming here because it's the same. And the only thing that concurrency apports here is complexity on the code because the time that we have to wait here is the same because the resource B depends on the resource A. In this case, it's better to use just a simple sequential programming. Well, now we will see some example of this with code. So first of all, I want to tell you that you will have all the code of this video here in this repo where I explain you all about the concurrency on synchronization and go routines and whatever. 
all the things that you will see in this video, you have it here on this GitHub repo that the link will be in the description of the video. So here we have a main function that execute this function with concurrency. This is the function. And this function, well, will generate 10 go routines that will be executing in a concurrent way. And that go routines, all of these go routines will execute this function to work. And this function, what it does is increment this pointer of integers by one and then wait for one second. So here we have a for loop that will execute 10 go routines with this body in the function. So each go routine will execute this do work function. To execute go routines in Golang, um, well, any concurrent method in another programming language, we will need to use some synchronization methods to synchronize our go routines or our sub process to make them work properly. So here we use wait groups, that is a synchronization mechanism that what this wait group does is like a counter. Here we increment by one the counter of this wait group and well here we will we will be waiting to this counter of the wait group to be zero. With this differ function we are telling here that every time that the go routine ends execute this function wait group that done what it what it does is reduce this counter by one. So here we add one, two, three, four, five at, until ten. And every time that a go routine ends, well, with this differ function, with this weight group that done, the, the counter will be reduced by one. And when the counter of this weight group gets on zero, well, we'll execute the rest of the code of this function. So first we will see how this with concurrency function works. So I will execute this, go run main that go. Um, well, this function is executed in one second and it's telling me that the balance is 10. Okay, so we can think about it because this function do work have a, a wait time of one second. So every time that this do, do work function is executed, this function have to wait for one second. But we are executing this function 10 times and we just wait one second. How we can do that? And well, that is because we are using go routines in this case. So there are 10 go routines executing in a concurrent way. So this, this go routine is executed and it's blocked because you have to wait one second. So the go routine number two is executing increment the balance by one and it's blocked, execute the number three and so on. So at the end, all the goroutines will execute in once in only one second. When if we use this another function that is without concurrency, we are doing the same but without weight groups, without a synchronization mechanism, because we are not applying concurrency here but we are calling to this do work function and passing here the, the pointer to this balance variable. So now we will execute this function and we will see the difference with this another function. I will let here the result of the with concurrency function to compare it. So here I will execute this another function and we just have to wait. And well, we get here that this function without concurrency executed in 10 seconds. So here we wait for 10 seconds to get something that with concurrency, we can get it in just one second. The difference is huge. So every time that you can apply concurrency, you have to do it because it will save you a lot of time. So you have to know that every time that you need to get independent resources, you can apply concurrency and you will be benefit of the concurrency because in each dead time when you apply concurrency, 
we'll, ex we'll try to execute another things and another things to make that works. But we have to apply concurrency in a smart way. Not always concurrency, it's better. Because in some situations, applying concurrency, the only thing that will apport to us is complexity to our code. So we have to be careful and be smart when to apply concurrency. We have to apply concurrency when we identify that the resource that we want to get and we need to get to make this program are independent each other and also each resource have a dead time in each request. And well, that's all. I hope that you can understand when you have to apply concurrency and well, if you like this kind of videos, you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Um, well, if you have to tell me something or you have some questions about this, you can let me know on the comments. I will respond to you. So that's all. See you on the next video.